back to Parliament, where we know that Catherine Apeku, the Minister Designate for Tourism, is still answering questions from members of the committee. See, uh, we have unique cultural offerings, but people tend to book for Kenya, Senegal, Gambia, other than Ghana. But we need to aggressively promote our brand in the tourism sector. And uh, it's good to note that Mole is now on the map because of Zaina Lodge. There is a beautiful world-class resort built there. And in the same vein with the uh, crocodile sanctuaries, once we encourage private sector to set up uh, eateries and accommodation that are of international standards around our ecotourist site. It will, by extension, promote tourism, create jobs, and create wealth for Ghana. Quite related to the ecotourism will be the need for you to collaborate with the Ghana Wildlife Department and also the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources. How do you intend to do this so that we preserve first and foremost what is of a significance in terms of ecology for people to visit Ghana? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, part of the transitional notes, we discovered that uh, uh, predecessors, my predecessor, immediate predecessor, was working uh, in collaboration with the Botanical Gardens of Abri. Uh, they're doing some collaborative, it's, it's yet to be implemented in the same vein with Kakum and other eco sites that we intend to deepen uh, this effort to make sure that it's projected as a unique tourist site and also to be preserved. Uh, so, yes, there are plans to work it, but with the collaborative ministries like uh, local government that houses uh, parks and gardens and uh, lands and forestry where we have unique offerings that has to do with the preservation of our natural sites. So yes, and there are other ministries as well, especially uh, water and sanitation, it keeps coming up. Once the site, the cultural site is clean, it has a nice toilet facility, it will encourage a potential tourist. So there is a lot of collaborative efforts that we will do once given the nod. Mr. Chairman, finally, if you look at the MPP manifesto, you are talking about creative arts. Unfortunately, you have dropped the part of creative arts in the naming of the ministry. Do you still intend that it will be very vigorously pursued to support those who are creating, innovating, and making sure that things happen in the tourism industry? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It, arts in itself is creative. Uh, so we felt the, the creative tag is already intended. Uh, the executive instrument actually states it very clear that it's Ministry of Tourism, Culture, and Creative Arts. Uh, in the new pronunciation, we did not leave the creative because it's intended that arts as a sector is built on creativity, innovation, and hidden talents. So that's why it felt redundant adding it. But it's, it's intended that arts should be creative, should be innovative. So it is part and parcel of the name. Now we come to the leadership. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, the whole day listening to our colleague and her answers support, get the private sector. I really want to know how are you going to get the private sector to participate in a lot of the programs that you've been talking about? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There are already precedents. We have Moving Pick collaborating with the ministry. We have Kempinski collaborating with the ministry. There are modalities. We have departments that are actually mandated the investment arm of the ministry, Ghana Tourist Authority, Ghana Tourist Development Authority. And we have other agencies, the Ghana Museum and Monuments Board. These are all departments within the ministry that the ministry itself gives them the policies, the programs, the initiatives, and the support the legal support to go out and take on initiatives 
to bring in private sector. But we have uh, a plethora of examples of this collaboration with the private sector uh, to deepen our tourism industry. So there are modalities already. How to do it is uh, there are lots of investment forums that the ministry embarks on. Uh, there's one recently that they came back from in Holland where the ministry will go to uh, a fair specifically for tourism investments and they use that opportunity to explain and showcase what Ghana has and a potential investor gets interested and comes to the country to invest. So there are uh, the modalities in place to well, pursue having seen your sector. chief director try to provide more information. Yes. Yes. Can you tell he, this house he, he did. for the past four or eight years or probably even 12 years, just three initiatives that your minister has been able to take with a, in collaboration with the private sector and is well established. Any three examples of such collaboration with the private sector and what it has yielded? One is the Kempinski Hotel. The ministry facilitated the Kempinski Hotel. The ministry actually, GTA, has 10% holdings in Kempinski. And the same with Movenpick, 10% holdings in that. So it's a, a testament of the ministry. I'm asking, so, what has that done to our creative art or culture or our tourism? What has it done to it? It's created jobs. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's created jobs. It's also put us on the map. Uh, a potential tourist coming to stay in Kempinski in Ghana gets to know about the nation. But the pivotal one is the job creation. The job creation is really the most important one for me. It's the job creation. Because I heard uh, since morning the questions that are being asked you, whether about the cultural center in Tamale, whether in uh, uh, Cape Coast, or is it second D? whether the training school for waitress and hoteliers. I didn't see how you can link the moving peak establishment or the Kimbiski to the things that you've been talking since morning. And how you've been saying that we'll get the private sector to support, we'll get the private sector, we'll support the private sector to do that. And I'm saying that if we could just cite maybe three, maybe many, just one that you say that in collaboration with the private sector, that ministry had been able to do in the development of tourism in Ghana? The major one is the paragliding festival as well. It has been an establishment and an initiative of the ministry. But again, it was in deep collaboration with private sector, bringing pilots from uh, overseas to to deepen the paragliding experience. That's one. As you know, uh, tourism is an invisible export. So the tangible ones that came to mind immediately is the Kempinski and Moving Peak. These are solid infrastructure development that showcases the collaboration of the private sector and the ministry. The ministry is an enabler. We create the environment for the private sector to take on the investments. We do not build hotels, but we can enable, create the environment for the private sector. So before I take her to the manifesto, last year we have a program in the Zongo we call Zongo Fest, and normally it happens after the Edel Fitter, and then you have almost all the Zongos in Asante region coming together to have a cultural display. And the previous administration did promise that it was going to be taken up by the Minister of Tourism so that it's supported and then better developed. I don't know whether in the handover you had anything about the Zongo Fest. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, I did not. I saw the Homo Fest, but it will be an opportunity for us to pursue because of the success story of HomoFest from my predecessor, I think it's an opportunity to showcase our diversity in culture and religious tolerance in the nation. So yes, once given the nod, that will be uh, a fest to really look at and project it. Uh, it has intrinsic benefits to the nation. We are unique in our cultural diversity and our religious tolerance is unrivaled in Sub-Sahara. So it's something that we would definitely look at pursuing with your support. Thank you.
Mr. Chairman, on a lighter note, I don't know whether you've heard about the story of a, a gentleman arriving at Kutuka and then he decided to slang Latobi Okoshi. And then the, the taxi driver said, oh, we'll take 200 Ghana. They said, hi, you, Latobi like Okoshi, he just here, you are saying 200. I said, ah, but you, you are Ghana and then you are speaking like a, a, a foreigner. The attitude with which we see foreigners coming to our country, what specific thing do you really intend with the help of your ministry to do about the attitude of the average Ghanaian when he sees a foreigner? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's culture and pride. Social media showcasing uh, that sense of pride that we read about in the 60s uh, can be reignited. It is this inferiority complex that can plague us as a matter of foreign movies or things that we see and thinking we are less of. So yes, as part of the cultural retooling, the National Commission on Culture, there is a group out there called the Culture Forum with a lot of our uh, uh, very important personalities in the nation who are very passionate about the African pride. So it's something that we could look into, but it can only be done with aggressive marketing strategies, talking about who we are as a people through our culture. Well, in fact, what I wanted to hear was about the attitude where the average Ghanaian, if he's selling uh, even uh, banana, and then you, st you stand by with a car to buy and the price of the banana is different from somebody who is footing to buy the banana. Or for that matter, if somebody sees a, a white man or somebody uh, believed to be coming from abroad, then the price of commodities change because he thinks that this one uh, is a big fish. What do you intend to do about the education and the attitude of us towards each other? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That is where the reintroduction of the national orientation, that's why I took it to the cultural pride. If you believe in yourself as a Ghanaian and you know your worth, then you will not uh, kuto to other cultures. So it is part of the aggressive marketing strategies to ensure that uh, the pride of place in our culture, our uniqueness, is projected. And uh, the attitude will, through the educational programs, not change overnight, but be minimized to a point where we appreciate who we are as a people. Mr. Chairman, in an answer to an earlier question with regards to the health and education tourism, she just said, oh, we'll support and promote. I just want to hear how will you be, how will you support or the promote that you mentioned earlier, health and education as part of our uh, tourism? Uh, one of the immediate decisions, thank you, Mr. Chairman, is uh, the ministry before uh, the transitional team had already made arrangements with CNN. And uh, sometime in March, the ministry, once giving the nod led by me, will have the opportunity to do uh, an interview with CNN to showcase what Ghana has to offer. That interview in itself will be the selling platform to invite private sector participation in the tourism sector in Ghana. So I look forward to it once we're given the nod to create the enabling platform to sell Ghana at that level where the whole world will watch, and because everybody watches CNN, to see the unique offerings of Ghana and to also sell our unique points that it will be a platform used to invite private sector participation in our tourism sector. So that, to me, will be one of the pivotal ways of encouraging the collaboration. And we, as a ministry, once given the nod, will sit back and support through legislation, tax breaks, things that we can do to enable private sector development in the ministry.
Mr. Chairman, let me just uh, give a typical example of what others are doing. For example, as the as the whip, and then I get a lot of emails from Kenya talking about their parliamentary uh, parliamentary institute and the kind of training that it can give. Get email from Israel about the kind of uh, ailment and how they cure it and how they can facilitate and get you there without much headache. I'm just asking, within even the sub-region in Africa, how will you promote the health and education tourism? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Of this nation as a tourist destination. Two, uh, we are competing with Kenya, Gambia, and Senegal. We have some homework to do because it's a competitive industry. You cannot aggressively bring in to people to the nation when you have open defecation at the beaches. So that's why I keep holding on to the support. Unless we prepare the ground for massive injection of infrastructure development in the tourism sector, uh, the competition will always be keen. Uh, the option is between Ghana, Senegal, uh, Rwanda, as Honorable Ayariga said. The, the competitive edge is there, and I need to be practical and not assume that it's overnight people will come. Uh, we have to work at it, creating the enabling environment. And those are some of the strategies that I laid out earlier. Aggressively marketing Ghana as a destination, fixing our sanitation menace, and thirdly, ensuring that the private sector that's already in place in Ghana is encouraged to invest more in our tourist sites. Then it will be easier to extend into the international markets to come in and expand what we have in existence. Mr. Chairman, I thank you. Mr. Chairman, in the MPP manifesto, page 169, when you say that provide incentive, or oh, sorry, invest in tourism, IT, as an enabler. What do you really mean? That is one of the pillars that we are aggressively going to pursue, uh, using technology to harness the tourism potential, and it's called the single window platform, where we will use technology to automate most of our tourism activities that's what I was mentioning earlier, that you can sit at the click of a button in Finland and be able to book a hotel for Ghana, book a, a tourist site, a visit, a plan, but it will be enabled by technology. We have had companies that have brought their proposals. I saw all of them through the transition, and a decision will be made once a substantive is taken in there with your kind permission. And we will have to use technology do the automation platforms and even with revenue collection strategies. We have a lot of the museums, our tourist sites that manual ticketing and there's a lot of leakage challenge. So with technology it will enable tourism in terms of GDP, in terms of job creation and in terms of eliminating or minimizing the leakages at collection points. So yes, it will be IT enabled using the single automation platform. Mr. Chairman, I, I hope my colleague, having been a member of parliament, I've heard about the Financial Administrative Act and the tribunal that needed to be set up after uh, parliament has done its work and the challenge that it's having. I hope you've heard about those things. Now, in the MPP manifesto, there is this promise to collaborate with the CJ, Chief Justice, to create a special high court for defaulters of creative art. How do you intend to do that, knowing these challenges that we've had with even an act of parliament that has been passed for so many years and the challenges of establishing that tribunal? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, piracy is a real threat to the creative arts industry, and the 1995 Copyright Act uh, is there, but it needs to be uh, beefed up to support the people in the creative art industry, their talent, their property, uh, intellectual property rights, and these are some of the well-intended uh, thoughts and vision that as we can start in our first term, that getting a division in the fast track court to create 
an enforcement unit for um, uh, those who break the law by pirating the works and arts of uh, people who will be punished. Yes, it will take time, but I'm very hopeful that with the support of Parliament, especially the uh, Committee on Subsidiary Legislation, once we come up with a draft and with your kind permission given to them, they will look at it. And it's a proposal that tends to support the creative arts industry because they lose out a lot on piracy. And if you go to the markets here, you have a lot of foreigners selling our hard-worn, talented programs and CDs and tapes. It's, it's very disheartening. So yes, it's well intended and we will pursue it once given the nod. It might not be overnight, but the intention is to start. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I hope my colleague is aware of the tourism fund and its establishment. I heard you earlier talk about creative art fund. Is it also going to be a fund on top of the tourism development fund? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, it's in our manifesto. If we shore up the opportunities in the creative arts industry, it is possible to create a fund to support the actors and actresses and the film producers and people in the arts industry, yes. And we can actually do these opportunities to create support mechanisms for our talented groups. Yes, the tourism fund is totally different. It's a 1% levy charged on hotels and establishment. And the creative arts fund, once established, is intended to support the actors in the creative arts industry. Are you by this saying that the tourism development fund, as created now, cannot be used to support the creative arts? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, clause 22 spells out the object of the fund, and it is not clear that we can. That's why we are planning to set up a, a dedicated fund once given the nod, uh, because it might require an amendment to Act 817. It is not stated equivocally that it can be used to support the creative arts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Honorable Deputy Chairman. Um, thank you very much, Chairman. Honorable nominee, congratulations once again. Um, I see a lot of your chiefs in here to support you. And I like your headgear. It takes her back into the day. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, my question relates to our airport, Kotoka International Airport. On arrival from any country, when you land and you enter, I don't see anything Ghanaian that will attract me to our tourist sites. If you go to other countries, I've been to Ethiopia, when you get there, there's somebody that approaches you, gives you a flyer, when you get to Dubai, even when you don't want to go to any of their tourist sites, they will approach you, many of them, to many tourist sites. And it happens in many other countries, Singapore, everywhere. But when you get to Ghana, you don't see these things. I believe that um, if we want to sell our country and promote tourism, it is one area that you'd have to look at. If you're given the note, can you assure the entire house that you would make sure, because it is the primary um, place to sell your country because the person hasn't even stepped out yet yet he or she is being approached and the, even the way they approach you would you give us the, the assurance that you do something of the sort if you're given the note thank you mr chairman yes as part of our transitional notes we realize that, that the first experience of a potential tourist is at the airport and like you have rightfully said, in other jurisdictions, you have the Visitors Bureau, you have a tourism office right at the airport. And uh, I note that we have the attic, which is across from uh, 
Accra International uh, Tourist Center, which is across from Afrikiko. It's a bit far from the airport. So yes, once given the nod, we intend to uh, put up uh, a swanky tourism office called it the Visitors Bureau. So the first stop will be to go there. And it has to be aggressively marketed. Again, it goes back to the marketing mm. on social media, at websites, at the foreign mission. So you know that once you step off the plane and you get to the airport, there is a, a stop where you can get all the data. The single window uh, platform will also help to some extent, but the physical presence at the airport is urgently needed. And uh, we do hope to do that uh, especially even the ones who will greet you wearing some traditional outfit and having some calabash to give you some welcome and it can be done and the reason why we have the creative arm of the industry we will tap into their uh, talents and set up something that's authentic Ghanaian uh, to showcase what we have thank you thank you um, the emphasis should be on they approaching them rather than just looking for you talked about the bureau in there you have to go there but I think we should move beyond visitors or possible or potential tourists going to look for it we should get them interested in looking for these stories right? my next question most of the roads leading to our tourist sites terrible if we seek to promote tourism and to get the required revenue due us as a country. We need to work at it. I have one um, uh, castle, one of the Asian castles in my constituency in Seseme. Very, very, very... In Accra. In Accra, Seseme, yes. But the road network to the place... So I want to... And it's not the only one. Many other tourist sites, the road network to that place is so much... It's, it's nothing to write home about. What would you do to, together with the roads minister to ensure that, if not all, at least the major ones are dealt with? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, it's something I've had the discussions with the Honorable Minister for Roads designate that uh, we have to see the, the economic viability of tourist sites. Uh, if we are able to invest in the destination to sites, the roads, and it's not much, it's a kilometer, two kilometers, sometimes it's just three or four kilometers to a major tourist site, that will improve our GDP and by extension create tourism revenue. So I have already talked to him, but I have to make a case, once giving the nod, uh, budget hearings to link that the tourism development is collaborative with roads, with the aviation sector, with uh, the sanitation. So yes, we do hope we do hope to collaborate with some of these ministries, but with specific targets uh, to tourist sites that have high traffic. Uh, the Cape Coast Castle, the Lemina Castle, the Axim Fort, Zulazo, places that have high traffic. The Fajato, if you go to Vli, it's the same problems across the nation, and we do intend to aggressively pursue some form of rehabilitation once given the nod. Add, Sesame, add my aim to it. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> my last one. I want to have your take on the recent telenovelas on our television, all our television stations. Telenovelas promoting foreign culture, foreign behaviors, foreign even mentality of who a beautiful woman is. As my daddy would say, African woman. We know the African, but our children are watching all these uh, tape movies and it's recycling them as to what our real culture is. What has happened to our TV theaters and uh, Inspector Bedia Kunz and all that? I want your take on it. You think it's, it's a step in the right direction? And if, if you think there ought to be something done about it, what would you do about it? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a, a very uh, difficult and challenging aspect of our free market model and censorship challenges. Yes, it's a very big challenge and it's devastating to our local arts and creative movie industry. Uh, we have the Cinematography Act and we have the Film 
bill that has already also been passed and the efforts to dialogue with some of these entities because they are commercial entities and we know the censorship laws in the country what we have as a challenge can only be done through encouraging our movies encouraging our supporting our film industry so if they saturate our tubes our tv with indigenous ghanaian movies quality indigenous ghanaian movies then it will naturally demand and supply bring some of these foreign entities down but aggressively we need a policy and i, I tend to shudder as a member of parliament because of censorship laws i i, I have to balance it and uh, we have repealed the criminal libel law we have the free uh, air to uh, the television stations are privately owned. So once you step into the zone of regulating, then you might step into the censorship challenges. But nevertheless, the dialogue with the film industry, and again, uh, the support, because there's a talk of a film fund, to give them the needed boost so they will actually produce indigenous movies that are modern, trendy, and meeting the market needs. So it will naturally if you watch some i've watched african city a, a ghanaian production and and it's more than it's trendy and people love to watch something that is of african nature but uh, meeting the 21st century trend so it is a challenge accepted it is a challenge and uh, we will have to sit and the whole nation will also have to support what we're showing our children. Are these the values we want to project? It is not just the ministry, but even the proponents of these commercial entities. Is this the cultural pride you want to share? Is this the legacy you want to be remembered? Uh, if you only focus on the commercial side of it, what is it doing to our culture? So it's a dialogue that has to be at the national level. Uh, if you love Ghana, do you want to show some other foreign cultures over yours? So it, it is a real challenge, and uh, we intend to look into it and uh, consult the stakeholders who are doing it as a commercial entity to see how best we can work around it. Chairman, let me thank you for the opportunity and to join you in congratulating Catherine Ablema Afeku. I worked with her in the Communications Committee of Parliament before she launched, I shall be back. <laughs> and Chairman, to note that uh, probably as a country, we should not take the tourism industry for granted. And therefore, you are going to a key portfolio. Tourism remains a strong driver of world trade, a major source of foreign exchange. I'm reliably informed that it's about in 20 of the 48 developed countries, tourism remains the first or second major foreign exchange earner. What will you do to expand the size and character of tourism in Ghana? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There are three major projects that I intend to pursue once approved. The first and foremost is the Accra Marine Investment Drive. It is a pivotal, iconic project that once it's given the nod with all the technical details and it takes off, it will promote Ghana and it will also be a catalyst for change. Not only will it create jobs, it's over 500,000 projected jobs to be created from this Marine Drive initiative. The second one is the single automation platform. If we are able to source out of the contenders, the, the companies that have presented their proposal to automate revenue collection strategies, revenue sharing, and revenue strategies within the ministry. We'll be able to see significant leap into the consolidated fund. And the third and foremost one, my passion, is improving domestic tourism. Getting about a half of the population of Ghana. We are 26 million, you take the workforce of 8 million people and promoting internal or local tourism. That right there will generate jobs in the rural communities where the sites are and within the cities. If we start to visit our own sites, we will, by extension, promote tourism. Chairman, thank you. In your answer to many other questions, 
you have repeatedly said single automation platform and you want to deepen domestic tourism when will you launch the single automation platform and what will you do to expand domestic tourism thank you mr chairman i'm very hesitant with timelines uh, once i assume office I get in there and I meet the directors, we will have a timetable of execution and I will be able to uh, have some specific timelines. As of today, it will not be prudent for me to give because I will not be in a position to say anything with timelines. But I, I intend to pursue once given the nod. Chairman, the government has a four-year mandate. So your mandate at the tourism portfolio it's four years. When sh should we expect you? One year, two year, within the four years, when should we expect that you launch the single automation platform? I will be prudent to say within the tenure of my office, it will be launched. Thank you, sir. That's sufficient. Uh, Chairman, the nominee, I believe, haven't been officially informed as minister probably have been joking to have an understanding of tourism size in Ghana, forts and castles. You want to share with us what information you have about tourism size in Ghana and castles and forts? Thank you, sir. Uh, the Ghana Museum and Monuments Board gave me a brief that we have 64 forts and castles in the nation. Out of the 64, only 18 is in good standing that we can have tourists visit and have the experience. And uh, the 18, the most prominent ones that you hear of is the Elimina Castle, uh, the Cape Coast Castle, and the Axim Fort St. Antonio Castle. So there is an opportunity to promote the 18 in good standing uh, to improve our tourism dollars. There's also one in Keta, Princestein. So from the Easternmost, you have the one in Keta, and from the westernmost, you have Fort Apollonia in Benin. So the 18 that are good, you only hear of two or three that drives traffic. So as part of the mandate, we would want to expand the tourist experience in the 18 that is in good standing. Do you have any plans for new ones? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No. The plans are actually to invite curators and conservationists to look at the ruins. We do have a lot of ruins of forts and castles that will be an architectural and archaeological delight to look into it as a tourist attraction where we have castles that there, are, there is a, the traditional folklore of the fights or the resistance between the communities around where it was built. They actually either brought it down themselves or it actually came down. So new ones, no, but revisiting the old sites to bring the historical significance of it, that is what we'll pursue. Uh, Chairman, will the nominee assure us of a shift in policy focus? We recently all in Ghana witnessed an amazing and incredible cultural display with the burial of the Asantima in the Kumasi, which was not a major tourism event, but it's in its character and form, it was a rich display of Ghanaian uh, culture. But at the funeral, what will you do to realize the many other potentials for Ghanaian tourism promotion? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as much as it's a sensitive topic, it's something that we discussed as part of our uh, strategies to do royal funerals as tourist potential. And uh, some people, renowned photographers, have approached us that they have the opportunity to do these royal funerals in books because we've seen other jurisdictions where the late Diana, Princess Diana, the mementos and all the things that accompanied the funeral uh, raked in tourism dollars for the nation. Yes, it is part of the plan. Tourism, funeral tourism and traditional weddings as another tourist attraction where uh, we will encourage 
uh, foreigners who come in to actually go through the, the clan, the dowry, the rights, and if it's packaged well, it's an avenue to give rural communities unique cultural offering in traditional marriages. So yes, royal funerals is something that we intend to pursue. We don't wish anybody dead, but it's inevitable. And when some of these things happen, we intend to uh, market it to showcase our unique culture. Hey, German, the quality of Ghanaian hotels and the rates that they charge relative to hotels of higher status uh, abroad and the quality of Ghanaian restaurants and the food that we sell, what will you do to improve that? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I earlier offered to showcase the potential of Ghanaian cuisine, and I promise to do so after the sitting. Uh, the potential is there, and I've had the opportunity to visit certain localities, and I've noticed what we can do at this ministry. Uh, the second one is the demand and supply challenge of the hotel rates. Uh, once we are able to take off with the iconic Marine Drive, you have 30, 40, uh, five-star, four-star hotels. It will naturally, uh, demand and supply will set in, and the rates will naturally come down. If you have more offering, you will not... Uh, be saddled with two or three hotels. What we face as a challenge is the high occupancy rate of the good hotels in the nation. It will be difficult to tell a private investor, bring your rate down because it's always occupied. But where there is competition, where there is alternative offering, it will actually uh, come down by itself because we cannot regulate the, the rates as of now, but competition will set it aright. Chairman, I heard the nominee very strong. It's only in Ghana that beaches fronts are not rich areas, and they become avenues for open defecation. You've made reference to the Marine Drive. I know that the president of the National House of Chiefs shares a similar passion in the development of that particular area. What will you do to deal with its negative usage? the beaches. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There are already stakeholder engagement with the uh, residents and indigents of this enclave. Uh, there are some challenges that we face as of now, but once we deepen the stakeholder fora and meet their demands of places of convenience being built for them and the other nature of their demands that they have in the plan, uh, we will be able to avert some of these things and turn around the fortunes of the coastal belt of Ghana, starting with Marine Drive. As I said earlier, it's 540 kilometers of coastal line untapped. And the Marine Drive, once it takes off, will be the catalyst to replicate that in other coastal regions from the Volta, the Central, to the Western. And uh, uh, it will, by in itself, encourage the employment. If you work in that enclave, you earn some money, you'll build your own toilet and you will not use it. But in the short term, we will encourage the construction of decent uh, places of convenience to support that challenge. If it's available and the rates are minimal, I believe strongly that the residents of the coast will patronize it. Uh, Chairman, thank you. The problem with the development of Marine Drive it's more of you persuading and winning the support of the Ghana traditional authority in terms of land first acquisition and the purpose for which it was uh, acquired. And then now using it for purposes other than to which it was acquired, maybe for births and deaths. Are you assuring us that you will diplomatically engage and ensure that you have ease of uh, transition in terms of getting the land available for the purpose of its development with a private sector player. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, that is exactly what we intend to pursue. Chairman, there is a relationship between tourism and poverty, and using tourism as a tool to alleviate poverty in terms of the creation of direct and indirect uh, jobs. And there's also a strong relationship, as the deputy majority leader raised, between travel and tourism. Uh, I know it's not your mandate. Ghana has no airline. 
Therefore, if you say you are going to promote tourism, what will you do with your counterpart minister for Ghana to have a dedicated airline which will be principal to the attainment of your core objectives? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Minister of Aviation during our transitional dialogue has already alluded to the, the collaborative efforts that we intend to do because we are a sister uh, ministry. So if someone has to come to Ghana, apart from using the, the ships, they will have to come through the airport. So yes, it's something that we have discussed already and uh, we intend to pursue. She's also thinking of charter flights. Uh, as it takes time, a long-term plan is to have the national airline, but in the interim, charter flights will be encouraged where group tours are encouraged and uh, she's really passionate about that and it will by extension support the expansion of our ministry. Chairman, I believe the nominee given her background uh, is also a consummate uh, observer of what goes on television. You have seen many other countries like Indonesia advertise their tourism potential and investment potential by way of uh, television. I do know in Ghana haven't played a role that our problem is branding. Instead of, I've seen you use the word marketing, marketing. I mean, if you are entering uh, Britain, even by the High Commission just here, you see the flag of Britain and they say sports, Great Britain, using sports to sell the country. We expect that when you become minister, like Ghana's foreign missions abroad, we should be able to brand well and have a uniquely Ghanaian advertisement which sells uh, Ghana abroad. Will you do that? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, as part of the efforts to promote Ghana, CNN uh, coming into Ghana to do that is actually the, the whole purpose of the visit is to do a blip like what they do for Ni Nigeria with GLOW supporting them to sell Ghana and also have an uh, aggressive uh, branding project for all the foreign missions where the potential tourists going into process visa will be able to see, read, and even watch a five, ten minutes video of Ghana. These are some of the collaborative efforts we are doing with the creative arm of the ministry where they'll come up with something trendy but relevant to selling Ghana. And it's uh, a project that we are very passionate about. Once given the nod, you will see and feel the new experience of Ghana. Why only CNN and no reference to other major international players and local television stations who are covering you now? Why, why only CNN? It's because of what I inherited. It has already been paid for and planned, so that's the first one on the list. But I've already had talks with local media, and uh, we intend to do the tours. Um, yet to assume the office, but we've been in talks behind the scenes to visit major sites and we'll go with our media partners in Ghana to get an up-to-date video which we can actually collect and do the plan. One of the things that has come up is the video to show in the airlines. As the flights are landing, we would like to collaborate with the major airlines that are 35 now to show a five-minute blip of landing into Ghana, where to go, what to see, where to eat. So these are all some of the strategies to sell Ghana to the tourist. Will you expand the remit? Will you expand the remit and coverage of this uniquely Ghanaian branding experience? Yes, once given the nod, we will look into doing that. Chairman, may I now go local? In Tamale, I hear very, but before Tamale, Guru and Kingstone a very young, promising artist who are coming up. I have Fancy Gadam of Tamale, a very young, promising musician who is breaking uh, grounds. That category of young tourism entrepreneurs, what plans do you have for them? We have quite a lot for them because we want to really promote Ghanaian talent and the establishment of the Creative Arts Council the Secretariat establishment will give us the opportunity to go out there and unearth these budding artists and to give them the exposure that they deserve, especially with Ghana at 60 coming up. Uh, there are certain programs that we are planning in collaboration with the planning committee, and there will be 
uh, the dialogue with the creative arm of the ministry to put up uh, the showcasing of talents, especially young and undiscovered or yet to be discovered talent. So uh, he falls in that category and we would love to make sure that he's put on a platform, not just him, but young and budding new artists in Ghana will be encouraged. And the biggest platform will be Ghana at 60, celebrating our 60th anniversary. We'll give them the opportunity to showcase the world what we have. Chairman, still on the relationship between roads, travel, and tourism, using, for instance, the Mole Game Reserve, until the Fufusi Road was uh, done two, three years ago, it probably took five, six hours just from Tamale to uh, Damangwe and to Larbanga to be able to have access, like an earlier question to it. Uh, Kintampo waterfalls, if you don't have a good accessible road, you probably may not be able to deal with it. Salaga market, it has a significant historical tourism uh, uh, experience. What will you do to facilitate better tourism to the Salaga market area? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the three northern regions has a plethora of tourism sites that is still yet to be discovered, and the challenge has always been access. So yes, uh, the, the collaborative effort with the road ministry is key, but making an aggressive demand to the road sector, the private sector, to also uh, come up with their own proposals to see how best we can uh, eliminate these challenges and also see the economic impact of it. I think not just leaving it to the road sector, but presenting a strong case, even in Parliament, in the form of question, urgent questions to be asked by uh, my good self to let the world know that for us to improve tourist sites, we need good roads. For us to improve tourism dollars, we need the road ministry to take our sites seriously. So yes, there will be methodologies to use. Chairman, I'm aware that the Youth Employment Agency was collaborating for the training of tour guards and young people in hotel and tourism management. I believe the Chief Director will brief you. Can we be assured that as part of your contribution to job creation, direct and indirect, you will continue with this initiative? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you rightfully said, the Chief Director is yet to brief me on that, but immediately, as once we assume office, uh, job creation is one of the pivotal uh, cardinal principles that we want to follow. And yes, it will be good. There's been talk already about uh, employing people as tourist officers across the districts, so it, it will fall in line with the model, uh, the module at the Youth Employment Agency. So yes, Mr. Chairman, it will be pursued. Chairman, my very last to the nominee. There are cultures in Ghana that are very possessive of the celebration of some festivals, like the Damba Festival of the Dagomba, Nanumba, Mamprusi. The Wales also observe the Damba Festival very highly, and it remains a major tourism activity for them. Will you encourage private sector sponsorship of that under the auspices of the Ministry of Tourism? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, it's one of the uh, strategies we're looking at, not just the Damba Festival, but all the festivals in Ghana to create avenues for employment. And yes, we have already started uh, talking behind the scenes with some of the private sector to give them that opportunity to sell their products, sponsorship titles, and also to promote. It is in their patriotic duty to promote our indigenous festivals. So yes, it's something that we'll aggressively look at. Made in Ghana and the smoke, and yes, what you are wearing yourself, and if you watch your back, beautiful Kente and uh, smoke, what will you do to promote those traditional uh, artifacts, in particular the use and promotion of those locally manufactured Ghanaian clothing? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As part of the uh, 
strategies with the Marine Drive project, we are to relocate the art center to Kaukudi to create a modern arts village that rivals that in Kenya or Senegal. And as part of that strategy, we will be able to have a bigger space, a wider uh, market reach, and promote our unique textiles, the kente from uh, the Volta, Agotime, and uh, Akpetoe, and the Bonure kente, and the smock from the northern region as well. So yes, there is an opportunity to work with the Handicraft Association to promote them uh, the world level. We also would want to use technology that goes back to the single automation, create online platforms for them to sell their goods and create opportunities for employment for our people. Chairman uh, Bolgatanga in the upper east uh, region is noted for its promise in the sale and promotion of these uh, handicrafts, including the smoke. And that is uh, a promising industry for that uh, area. If you visit the Bogatanga Cultural Center compared to our own Tamale Cultural Center, compared to Cape Coast, what will you do to improve the infrastructure to facilitate the development and growth of the arts industry? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's within the ambit of the ministry, the National Commission on Culture, and yes, we will be able to invest some of our ministry's uh, uh, money to promote IGF, especially in the northern sector, where the potential is huge. Okay, thank you. I was hoping that the ranking member will not come back from the meeting with the speaker <laughs> early enough, but he did. <laughs> well, uh, I, I, first... You said there's a policy on tourism or which is uh, almost outmoded, so to speak, or, or on culture. Culture. Let me, let me find out. If all the things in the policy were achieved, what values were we hoping to generate, accrue to Ghana? What values? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Our culture policy revision is to commercialize what we have. It's very uh, disheartening when you see people using kente, uh, adinkra symbols, sankofa outside of our jurisdiction and not generating any revenue for the nation, Ghana. So we wanted to review the cultural policy and also uh, beef up the commercialized angle of it. So you don't just take things from Ghana for granted. Uh, you see a lot of people using our Dinkra symbols in designs outside of Ghana, and there's no revenue coming back into the country. So if we have a policy that restricts usage or links it to uh, the, the revenue that will be directed to the nation, I think it would help us. But apart from the commercial angle, there's also the pride of culture. Uh, there's a threat of globalization where our indigenous cultures are dying or disappearing. Puberty rights in most communities are not existent anymore. So we want to give uh, the robust culture policy where, uh, especially in functions in the MMDAs, Ghanaian food will be served. In the functions, our uh, conferences, we will promote Made in Ghana. Things that put pride of place in our culture will be incorporated in a, a modern cultural policy. I would suggest that you incorporate in them programs that will encourage integrity, truthfulness in our, inter, uh, our dealings, and loyalty to our country. That's right. Uh, last one is just an observation. Ajua talked about, sorry, Honorable Ajua Safu talked about uh, elsewhere, people meeting you at the airport and selling their country, inviting you to workshops. My experience was interesting. I was going for a conference. At the time I landed at the airport, there was somebody there who knew the conference I was attending. He knew that my weekend was free and was ready to say, oh, you are right Saturday. Tomorrow you'll be free. Can you do these tours? He had all the information about me. And I was excited, so I took it. But another interesting thing, even though I was doing tours of very beautiful religious sites in Thailand, they found a way of landing me at a jewelry shop. Before I was aware, I was buying a ring. <laughs> and from there, he managed to get me to a suit shop. 
before all the way, a suit was being made for me. So you consider how you link your tourism and your business industry. Um, thank you. Uh, we thank you for attending on the committee. Are there any persons to be acknowledged? Um, Yes, um, Mr. Chairman, there are a number of people to be introduced. Some of them accompanied the nominee, others came by themselves, but we we'll still need to recognize their presence here. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Set Afiku is the spouse of the nominee. Mm. Nana Bright Odru Kwatin, Chief Director, Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture. Mr. Akwesi Ajman, Acting CEO, Ghana Tourism Authority. Mr. Kwadu Enchi, Acting CEO, Ghana Tourism Development Company. Very Reverend John Boa Kofi, a minister of the Methodist Church in Mankesim. Awulai Ati Brukusu the third, or my name of Lower Azim. Or Jiao Ho Yao Jebi the second, President, Western Regional House of Chiefs. Nana Kwesi Ajiman, the knife, or my name of Lower Discov, traditional area. Nana Kwao, Acting Paramount Chief of Upper Azim. Aulai and Gamatu Ajain, the second, or Mahini of Dura, traditional area. Okatechie Nana Anim, the first, national president, Ghana Tourism Federation, and also Sanahini of New Tafo Achim. Nana Kwami Ampadu, Kofi Adu Ajako, Marco Kraku Man. Mante Edinam Atachi Sokri Safu Pascaline Edwards Nana Tiasiwa the third Queen of Jura Achinim Aulai Ajefi Kwame Paramount Chief Insane Insane Dr. Joel Sonny Director of Projects Ministry of Tourism Nana Fuasapon Tourism Consultants some chips. Let me. Aurai Kaku Achirinsu, Paramount Chief of Apetem Traditional Area. Nana Teba, Teba Obahima of Elembele Traditional Area. Nana Ifati Beyeman, MPP Constituency Chairman. Frank Openyin, MPP Constituency Secretary. Nana Awiafom Gantwahini of Lower Azim. Yeah. And then the acting MPP regional chairman is also here, Mr. Ndede Sia. Okay, thank you. We thank you for coming to support the nominee. We're way above the numbers we permit here, but uh, because the uh, traditional rulers are so many and uh, performance. You're still watching Joy News on Morty TV and you, a while ago you were watching the vetting of the tourism minister designate Catherine Apeko and there have been a number of issues that she's been uh, addressing. I'll just run you through some of them. Uh, she talked about the ministry considering ways to get the private uh, sector involvement in the tourism ministry. She felt that that is important. Also, she said that um, she would work on intel intellectual property uh, right for some uh, for, for, for members of the creative arts because they are losing a lot because of piracy in the system. And she also addressed the issue of telenovela and she said that she will support uh, local people so that they will be able to produce 
local content as well and then uh, as well as royal funerals to you know showcase the unique culture of ghana parliamentary correspondent joseph upoku gako is monitoring events and he joins us live on the line gako what more can you tell us regarding what's happening Hello, Joseph. What has been the reaction? Hello, Joseph Opoku Gaku. Okay, we are trying to restore contact to Joseph Opoku Gaku. But I was earlier uh, telling you about some of the things Catherine Apoku, the minister designate for tourism, has been telling members of the appointment committee in parliament. And uh, I was saying that she also talked about the need for royal funerals. This would help the country showcase its unique culture to the rest of the world and she also talked about the need to work with the handicraft uh, association uh, haruna idrisu asked her about what she intended to do about such industry uh, people working in areas of fugu and some other areas and she said that indeed she would work with them to ensure she promotes their arts let's try and see whether joseph opoku gaku's line is restored hello joseph what's been the reaction to uh, the minister's vetting so far. Hello, Joseph. Yes, to hear on journeys on Morty TV. Some other things that the minister designate Catherine Afeku has been saying. She also talked about the need to promote Ghana food, and she actually promised that during their conferences at the tourism ministry, uh, she would ensure that Ghana foods are served. And so you could hold her uh, accountable for that in when she is approved as the minister. For tourism, you're still watching Joy News on Morty TV, but that will be it from here. But we'll continue with the live coverage of the Verton from Parliament. Good afternoon. <laughs>